While it might be slightly easier for keyboard players because they have the controls for their DAW built right into their instrument, I'm looking in your general direction, complete control users. For other instrumentalists, however, it might be slightly more tricky to record yourself. You gotta press the record key, grab your instrument, get ready to play, and then perform flawlessly once recording begins. So today we're gonna talk about four tips that you can use to make recording yourself go a lot smoother. What's going on voiceover warriors and keyboard ninjas? This is the Aurea Monster welcoming you back to Logic.Band, a website and blog full of tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you as a blind Logic, Mac OS, voiceover, and GarageBand user. Visit Logic.Band and subscribe to the mailing list to get a free getting started with Logic course. All right, so the first step we're gonna look at is increasing the metronome counting. So normally when you're recording yourself, you'd have a counting, and by default in Logic, it's set to a bar. But sometimes when I'm recording myself, I give myself maybe four bars, because that gives me enough time to hit record, pick up my guitar, get in position, and start playing. So I'm gonna show you how to change the counting time on a metronome. We're gonna press VOM to go to the menu bar in Logic. Menu bar, Apple. And I'm gonna press the letter R to jump to the record menu. Record. I'm gonna view down arrow. Record. Count in submenu. Go to the count in submenu. View right arrow. Count in submenu. Sixteen items none. And you see. Check mark one bar. By default, it's set to one bar. So I'm gonna view down arrow. Two bars. Arrow to three bars. Four bars. Four bars and view space. Four I'm bars. Not. Check. And now the count in when I start recording is gonna count me in four bars before it actually records anything. So if I go ahead and press the letter R to start recording. There you see that gave me enough time to grab my guitar, get ready, and start playing. Okay, so tip number two. You can use a drummer track either in place of or along with the metronome to keep you in time a little better. So Logic has this awesome drum synth called Drummer where it can come up with parts and all that stuff. I have a tutorial getting started with Drummer. I'll link to that in the description below. But for the purposes of this tutorial, We'll kind of cover the basics. So, track one Steinway Grand Piano, mute. I got track one selected here, which is the Steinway Grand Piano track that I use to to my guitar. So it's muted. But right now, I am going to press Command Option U. Auto play drummer group. And that added a drummer track to the project. And by default, the drummer track comes with an eight bar drummer region. And I'm gonna to return to the tracks header here. Tracks group in tracks track track in tra tracks tracks header in track track three audio one inches input monitoring. Let's group. go ahead and mute this. Toggle channel strip mute on. Because what I want to show you. Track two SoCal group is the SoCal track here, the drummer track, and it has an eight bar drummer region on it for us. So if I play this. You see, it has instantiated an eight bar drummer region in the project. So let's go back to our audio track, track three audio one inches. And I'm just gonna delete, delete window. What we recorded. Okay, default. Now in. Unto All right, let's unmute this track. Toggle channel strip mute off. And let's go ahead and hit record again. We're gonna leave the count in at four bars. So we got a much better feeling take there because we had some drums to play against. And I find a lot of times that you'll get better take playing the drums instead of just a click track. We'll get into the next tip in a second, but before we do that, I'd just like to thank Aiden, Bruce, John, and everyone else who visited logic.band slash support and sent some value back our way to help produce tutorials like these. If you'd love to join them, visit logic.band slash support can make a one-time donation or you can subscribe patreon style and make an ongoing monthly donation to keep high value tutorials coming your way so tip number three now we're going to look at using punch-ins to fix tricky parts so if i solo this guitar track right there and two bars one beat one division one tick two bars one beat two two bars one beat three divisions two bars one beat four divisions one tick 
two bars, two, two, two bars, two beats, four, two bars, three beats, one division, one tick. Right there, it's supposed to sound more like this. And you can tell I'm kind of muting that string. I'm playing it more like. So I'm going to use a punch in locator to fix that one part of the song. So you can set a punch in locator at the place where you want to start recording with command control option I and where you want it to stop recording. And I'm going to move to three bars, one beat, one division, one tick bar three and command control option O. Now by default, auto punch should be on. So that part of it should be fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play from about bar two, two bars, one beat, one. And what's going to happen here is it's only going to record between the punch locators. And if we don't want it to create a take folder, you can always delete what's between the punch locators. All right, so I went ahead and deleted that little section. So if I play now, perfect. So now I got my punch locator set up. I'm going to go ahead and press R and let's see if I can't nail that one section. If I play this from the beginning, one bar, one beat, one. and you see, I actually nailed it that time. But normally, what I probably would have done in a case like this is I would have played along with it so that when that part comes up, you don't hear that clean cut in right there. But that gives you an idea of how you can set up a punch in. Now, the other thing to remember is once you are done recording with a punch in you want to turn off auto punch mode because if you still have auto punch mode on, it will only record to the location with the punch locator. So the key command to turn off auto punch mode is control option command P. So I just pressed that. So now I should be able to go ahead and record to anywhere else in the project again. Also have a tutorial on how to punch record in more detail and I'll also link to that in the description below. All right, so now we're gonna get into four. And four is using a cycle range to record multiple takes over the same area. So you can just play it through a few times and then comp together a single take or multiple takes based on all the different takes you played. So I went ahead and duplicated the audio track. I panned the one I've already recorded on onto the left, turned off input monitoring on it, and then panned the new audio track all the way to the right and turned input monitoring on, on that track. So if I play this now, the guitar I already recorded is on the left, and my live guitar that I'm about to play is now gonna be on the right. So what I'm gonna do now is set up a cycle range, and I want the cycle range to start at bar one. I'm just gonna make sure the playhead is at one bar one beat one to bar one, and do command option left bracket, and I'm gonna go to bar nine. Two, four, five, six, eight, bar, nine bars one beat one division one tick do command option right bracket you can check that your locators are where they should be with command option home one bar one beat one division one tick and command option and nine bars one beat one division one tick all right there we go i'm gonna go back to the beginning one bar one beat one division and now i'm gonna turn on cycle mode cycle mode on and i press the letter c to enable cycle mode and what this now allows me to do is i can record and i can just keep recording because it's just gonna loop back around to bar one after it gets to bar nine and it's gonna create a take folder and I can just go ahead and record three or four passes of this section, and then I can go through the take folder and comp together one take based on all the different takes that I play. All right, so let's go ahead and hit record.
So I did about three or four takes there, and I have another tutorial about how to comp your takes and cycle through takes and pick the different parts that you want for the different section of the song, and I'll link to that in the description below. Also, I have a couple of bonus tips for you. The first one is you can use the punch locators and cycle mode in conjunction with each other. So you can set up a punch locator to only record a certain section, set a cycle mode to be a little bit wider, and you can go ahead and record and it will just keep cycling the same section of the project, say bar one to bar five, but it'll only ever actually record when it crosses between bar two and bar three, if that's where you set your punch locator. Another tip for you is you can use a foot switch to trigger your record start and stop. If you have a control surface like a Behringer X-Touch that has a foot switch port on it, so you can use that. You can also use MIDI or Bluetooth foot switches that you can hook up to your computer, stuff that you normally use to say control maybe a guitar amps or something like that, you can hook it up to your computer and map the MIDI foot switches to control your transport control and that's another way you can do that. If you want to see me do a tutorial on something like that, leave a comment below and if there's enough demand I might do a specific tutorial on that one. Other ones, set up a template, I have a tutorial on that, I'll link to it in the description below as well. Templates are a great way to have a project that has all your project settings and everything that you like to use plugins, etc. that you love to use are ready to go on the track so that you can just start recording. And my other one, if you saw me mention it before, um, if I go back to track one. Track one, Steinway Grand Piano, Mute, Groove. That is a track I set up to help me tune my guitar. I use it as a reference pitch for tuning my guitar. I also have a tutorial on that and I'll link to that in the description below as well. So those are four ways you can make recording yourself go a lot smoother, including a couple of bonus tips to help you get started. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe both to the YouTube channel and to the email list found at logic.band so you can get yourself that free getting started with Logic course and stay up to date with everything going on at logic.band. If you'd love to get some one-on-one -on -one tutoring, then don't hesitate to visit logic.band slash training. And if you'd love to help produce future tutorials like these, visit logic.band slash support where you can make a donation. Links to all of these along with a blog post and other supplemental tutorials can be found in the description below. And as always, until next time, happy recording.